How's it going, Yankee fans? Welcome back to Fireside Yankees with myself, Alex, and my guy, Ryan Garcia. Today, we're discussing Austin Meadows as a potential outfield solution for this Yankee team, you know, coming off kind of an injury riddle 2022. Uh, this is a player who has a lot of value, you know, maybe someone that you could extract on the Yankees could build on um, and turn into a really, really good, you know, contributor for the future. Now, it's always nice cashing in low, you know, buying low for a player who may have been injured, but those, those injury issues are now kind of in the past. Um, this is uh, a guy that Brian knows a lot about. He's in the process of writing a really good article on him. So definitely check that out when it's finished, probably today or tomorrow. Um, this is, this is an option, right? The Yankees have options in terms of Max Kepler, Brian Reynolds, depending if you want to go with a more risky or more blockbuster kind of strategy here, or go with a conservative strategy like Oswaldo Cabrera and Aaron Hicks, you know, not Hicks really, but more so Cabrera. I think we can all agree on that. But Ryan, before we dive into Austin Meadows, what he would bring and maybe what the Yankees have to give up in return. Uh, how you doing today, my friend? I'm doing great. You know, Austin Meadows is someone that I think, you know, could be on the trade block. You know, there are, there are some lingering, uh, you know, question marks about his health. You know, last year he had some issues medically. Uh, he had, um, uh, you know, he had contracted some illnesses uh, throughout the season. It was really just a, a long year of rehabbing and trying to get back on the field. And it affected his mental health. He didn't play, uh, you know, the rest of the season because uh, he was struggling with his mental health coming back from rehabbing, which is tough. You know, a lot of athletes, you know, have to. You know, when you rehab, it's a, it's a tough process, man. It's an annoying process. You're there, you know, you're going through rehab assignments, you're doing workouts, and you're not able to contribute on the field. And any setbacks just kind of dampen that mood. Um, you know, that's something that gets under discussed with athletes. But, you know, the Tigers, uh, you know, Scott Harris, their GM, uh, said he, he's clear to play. Um, you know, they... You know there there are there are concerns about whether he'll he'll be ready for opening day or not, which is a, which is a huge thing, not just for you know any team looking to trade for him or the Tigers in general, but for Austin Meadows, right? You know uh, it's good to see an athlete get back on their feet like that. Um, but Austin Meadows is someone who Yankee fans should be familiar with because he used to kill us, right? He had uh, a career near 900 OPS against the New York Yankees. Um, he's a guy who can you know 2021 is last fully healthy season. He had 27 home runs, 113 WRC plus, lug 458. Um, and quite frankly, his skill set, heavy fly ball hitter, he's built for a ballpark like Yankee Stadium. He doesn't have, uh, there are not a lot of ground balls in his batted ball profile. There are a lot of fly balls. There are a lot of, uh, there's a lot of opportunity to have pulled fly balls that uh, can uh, really do some damage in Yankee Stadium. This is a guy who has got a great max exit velocity. He's always around, you know, that 110 mark, which is well above league average. Um, you know, in terms of just being able to go out there and, and put loft in a ball. And as a left-handed hitter, that's really all you need to do in Yankee Stadium. Um, he could be a guy who hits, you know, 30 plus home runs for the Yankees if he plays in Yankee Stadium. You know, his sprint speed numbers this year weren't great, but typically in the past, he's an above average uh, guy in terms of just raw speed. His BSR, which is base running value, is in the negatives, which tells you he's a guy who's got some speed, but is the most disciplined base runner. Perhaps you can correct that Correct that um, in New York. You know, I know the uh, Tigers struggle as a team to do anything offensively, and the Rays have been up and down sometimes with base running decisions this year. They weren't very good base running wise. Um, so perhaps just being with the Yankees, you know, the Yankees have uh, emphasized the running game a little bit more over the last few years. Um, Meadows is a guy who has experience in left field, isn't the best defender in the world, career five defensive run save, but negative three outs above average. So, uh, you know, kind of a weird situation where he might be an, a, an above average defender, but he could also be a below average defender according to some metrics. So probably would say he's roughly league average out there, which is fine if he's giving you that 30 home run bat. He's got great walk rates. His career uh, with percentages below league average, uh, better than league average, excuse me. Um, you know, his he doesn't chase a lot. He's going to be a guy who can give you, you know, a 10, 9 to 10% walk rate and strike out roughly 20% of the time, which is a pretty good uh, strikeout to walk ratio. You know, hit double, you know, hit over 20 home runs and, you know, be someone that you can put, you know, kind of in that fifth or sixth spot. Uh, you know, you have Lemayhu leading off, Judge hitting second, Rizzo hitting third, stay in fourth and put medals behind, uh, you know, stay and have that righty, lefty, righty, lefty thing going and then have Glaber right behind medals. And that's a really formidable top six in your lineup. Medals is still young. He's not 28 until May. Uh, Yankees would have him for two year, more years after uh, they would have him through 2025, same amount of years of control as uh, Gleyber Torres. And, you know, that's something that I think the Yankees could really like having a young outfielder who can hit some home runs for you. Um, you know, I know the Yankees have guys like Dominguez and Prairie on the way. Uh, you know, that is the guy that you look at and, you know, you can easily move off of that as well. You know, he's in arbitration. So if he struggles this year, you can non tender him if need be. Um, you know, there's no long term commitment there. There isn't a, a contract. There isn't anything outside of just the money you decide to commit to him through arbitration. Uh, so I really think this could be a fit for a Yankee team that might want to keep an outfield spot flexible uh, in case Pereira or Dominguez pan out. And even if one of them pan out, you know, 
we discussed Bader earlier. You know, maybe if Bader leaves the free agency, one of those guys slide over to center field. Um, so you still have a left fielder there for a year. You know, Dominguez isn't going to play a fact a role in this 2023 team, I'd imagine, unless he just destroys the baseball in double a uh but um you know it's 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 a this is a player that you you get a left-handed bat you get a left-handed power bat and i think it'll help your lineup significantly and he projects very well for next year so uh definitely look at him as an under the radar kind of guy that you can bring in and get some pretty good offense out of yeah and as you mentioned you know you kind of hinted at uh the defense has been a little bit of a liability but the only position where he's actually been okay was left field uh, so that's definitely a good situation for the Yankees. So they want to go. He has five defensive runs saved above average, whereas he had negative 13 in uh, right field and negative four in center field. Uh, so having that little bit of boost in left field, maybe it translates over to the Yankees. Maybe that is an under the radar type of option for this team. Uh, but Austin Meadows, that's definitely a name we haven't heard. 27 years old. He's extremely young. He's a free agent in 2025. And he's, he just signed a one-year deal at $4.3 million to avoid arbitration. So uh, six foot three, 225 guy. Has good size. He's a lefty, so he fits the mold exactly for what the Yankees are looking for. Steamer projections have him hitting 20 homers this year, guys. He had 27 homers in 2021. 247 average with a 324 OBP. Uh, 117 WRPC plus, man. This is a very good player um, that's under the radar. I mean... If you're the Yankees, he's on a one-year deal. You could, you know, he's he's not a free agent, so you could easily just continue settling in arbitration with him and coming off a down year. Maybe the Yankees can get him at a pretty cheap price point. Um, I don't know. So if you were going to trade for him, I guess what would your preferable package be? If you had to, let's say it was like right now, you had to give up a couple players for him. Um, you know, what what would be our ideal package? So the Yankees, you know, have a one thing that I think the Tigers could really be interested in, and that would be and this is gonna sound crazy because the guy didn't play last year really. Uh, but Ben Wortvet could be a part of this deal. I mean, the Tigers don't really have a catcher, right? You know, you look at Jake Rogers and Eric Haas, they could hit, but neither of them are def- they're not catchers. Like it's not like bad defense. Like, you know, Gary Sanchez wasn't a great defender, but you could live with it because it wasn't the worst in the world and he could hit. So you kind of just put up with it when he hit. We're talking like these guys should not be major league catchers type of stuff defensively. So, you know, I look at Wartvet as someone that can give them, you know, some stability, a, a good framer, you know, someone who can at least be behind the dish and handle a pitching staff. They had that with Tucker Barnhart last year. He left. Wartvet's very similar, left handed, you know, good defense for a guy, isn't going to hit very much for you. Uh, but Wartvet, I think, is, a, is, is kind of that major league player you're looking at if you want to throw in a reliever uh Domingo Herman you know whether they need that pitching or not is debatable the Tigers have some pretty good young starters so I'm not sure they want to go down that route but Herman is a veteran the Tigers did have some injuries in that pitching staff you know they currently have guys like Matthew Boyd's that they brought in you know Michael Lorenzen uh they're bringing back they're hopefully going to get Spencer Turnbull Tarek Skubal and uh back but you know if they want to have stability in the back end of that rotation you know they could look to to get a starter. They could look to get a starter. I think Herman would help them, but perhaps that's not something they want to go down the route of. Um, especially since they're you know it's a new front office. They're trying to change the culture around things. You know, again, Meadows wasn't the only player to deal with mental health issues on that team. Uh, Eduardo Rodriguez as well. Uh, perhaps you want to keep certain guys who have off the field issues from your roster. You want to you know have a very uh, secure, tight knit group. Um, I can totally understand that. Uh, if you're looking at relievers, you know, you have guys like Albert Abreu who are going to become relatively ex- expendable. Uh, if we're looking at prospects that the Yankees could be moving, you know, Johnny Brito, Matt Crook, those are guys who are uh, pitchers in the lower level, uh, the higher levels of the minors. Um, if they want to bat, you know, if they want an outfielder, you know, Floreal is at least someone who can provide defense for them. Um, it, it's weird because Meadows is, it depends on how much, you know, what are they willing to get? What are the Tigers willing to give up? What are the Tigers value Meadows at? Do they view him as someone that they, you know, desperately want, you know, Meadows' value isn't very high. He's a corner outfielder who's coming off of a down year with two years of control. He's not going to command the most value on the market. But if the Tigers personally uh, value him a lot and think, you know, we don't want to get robbed. We don't want to, you know, give up a guy who, uh, we think has a higher ceiling. That could be, you know, that could, that could definitely be something that, um, that could also be the thought process of their organization. You know, quite frankly, I don't think Meadows is a great fit for them. I think Meadows, you know, needs can't be play that ballpark's bad for all uh types of uh hitters. It's really not the ballpark you want to be playing in. It's spacious, right fields, a cavern mess. You know, it's just not a ballpark to hit home runs in. Uh so you know, I think Meadows would not that Meadows is dying to leave, but uh he could definitely see a boost to his numbers. I think, you know, looking at the Yankees, I, I think, again, Wurtvet's kind of the number one guy that stands out to me. I don't think they, if they wanted Higa- a Higashioka, 
you know, I'd be willing to do that as well, obviously. But I don't think the I don't think the Tigers are looking for a 32 year old or 31 year old catcher. Where if I can kind of stick around for the next three years at least and work with your pitching staff, young pitching staff as well, which is important. Um, the Yankees just got to deep in, dig into their lower levels of the minors and find you know any arms that could entice them. Elijah Dunham could entice them. Elijah Dunham hit pretty well last year. Uh, so I guess if I'm going to put together a package that's kind of realistic, I'd go Dunham and Wortvet for Meadows. You know, give them an outfielder that's close to the major league level, also left-handed, just like uh, Meadows is. You give them a catch that they can play on opening day. Um, and the Yankees get an outfielder who has two years of control, um, isn't too expensive, has experience with the AL East, has killed the Yankees before, would definitely benefit from playing in Yankee Stadium. He projects for 117 WRC+. Plus. That's, you know, right around the Glaber Torres's and the DJ LeMays of the world, uh, which could really deepen this lineup and I think gives the Yankees the added spark they need uh, in their lineup and gives the Tigers, you know, uh, an outfielder that can come up in the, over during 2023 and also gives them a catcher for opening day. This is, I think that it's kind of a mutually beneficial deal. If the Yankees want to throw in an arm, Albert Abreu is pretty expendable. Uh, they can. Uh, and I think the Tigers would be looking for whatever they can get uh, pitching-wise because you can never have too much pitching. Yeah, I think that's a pretty pretty good option. Um, definitely one that is a little bit more underrated, a little bit more. I mean, look, the twenty if he had 20-plus home runs, if he could do that, uh, that's awesome. You know, lefty bat, Yankee Stadium, really, really preferable. And the shift being banned. Uh, you know, this is going to help players like Austin Meadows. This is going to help guys that are going to pull the ball a lot. And I think that he probably fits our molds quite nicely. Um, I'm curious to see if this would be an option for the Yankees, if it's someone that is even on their radar, because we hear a lot about Brian Reynolds. We hear a lot about uh, Max Kepler and whatnot, but this is not one that we've heard about. And it actually does make a lot of sense. So, uh, so I'll ask you this, you know, before we wrap this episode up, would you prefer Max Kepler or Austin Meadows? If you had to choose. That's a tough question because I think I'm getting a higher floor with uh, Max Kepler, but the ceiling with Meadows, you know, he remind, he's very similar, I think. I think you can really make the comparison that Austin Meadows is the Michael Conforto of the trade market where it's like it's a bat first guy. Maybe the glove isn't going to be too great, um, but, you know, the bat can be really damn good. You know, he projects really he projects the same as, as Conforto did as a free agent offensively. So um I really, I really think the fit there could be pretty nice. I, I do think that Meadows is someone that can go out. I mean, the offensive ceiling, man. If if you think Kepler could figure it out in New York, what is Meadows going to figure out in New York? You know, he could, he could. We've seen him put up elite seasons before. He put up a 144 WRC plus in 2019. You know, he put up a 113 uh, in 2021, which isn't elite, but you know, 27 home runs. You know, you're getting that type of production. You know, you could get again more, a little bit more offensive production uh, with uh, that short porch in right field. He's someone who definitely I, I'm enticed. I, I'm I'm inclined to say Kepler because the, of the floor, but the, a part of me thinks to myself, I'm looking at this lineup and just projecting it for opening day. Um, you know, I could really see Meadows slotting in nicely. And I, I think he is a guy who I'd also compare to that Rizzo comparison where we've seen elite seasons. From, we saw elite seasons from Rizzo prior to 2020. He was a consistently elite first baseman and then kind of fell off a little bit and fell into kind of being more of a league average first baseman. Comes over to the Yankees, 2022, fixes his swing, you know, gets more loft, and suddenly he's one of the best power-hitting first basemen in the league again. So, uh, Meadows is someone who I would say, if the Yankees want to explore that, I would be definitely all down. I'd be all in. Um, and I'd say the offensive ceiling and the offensive floor is higher, but the defensive ceiling and the overall player for, uh, the overall floor for Kepler is higher, but the batting, the offense, if you just want straight offense, Meadows is your guy. Uh, so, Ah, uh, it's tough. It really is close for me, but I think I might go medals here. I might lean a little bit towards medals as of right now, but I could also just be going off of the fact that I just, we, I just thought of, you know, we just started talking about medals this morning and it's a fresh player, a new idea, a new concept. And that might be what enticed me a little bit more. Uh, but I think it's even split, but that bat, man, that bat is really enticing. It really is. It's hard for me to pick, but I think I might slide side, side with medals here just because of that bat. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, I, I'm very curious to see what the Yankees do here. If they do go with someone, um, I would be curious to see what the trade differences are. So maybe we'll do. Maybe we'll have to do an article, Ryan, about like uh, comparisons between like a trade, what they'd have to give up for Kepler, what they'd have to give up for Meadows, and might who be the better pick there uh, as a follow up article to your specific Meadows one. That'd be kind of interesting to look at comparably um, what those two guys would offer side by side, and which one would be the better option for the Yankees. And you know, if if you're looking at it just by the numbers. Maybe they do shift to Meadows at a, at a similar price point given his upside. So definitely curious. I think he's a little bit younger as well. He, I think 27 years yeah. old at Meadows and 29 for Kepler, right? Yeah, they're two-year age gap. And free agency is only 2025 for, for Meadows. So you still have years left of control at a very cheap price point, whereas 
Kepler has 2023 in a club option with 2024 and a little bit more money, I think seven or eight million dollars. So you are getting him a little bit cheaper. Um, that's definitely a benefit. But guys, I'd love to hear your perspectives below in the YouTube comments. Um, definitely would love to hear if you would prefer Meadows or prefer Kepler. Definitely an intriguing player here that nobody's really talked about. So Kurt, kudos to you, Ryan, for uh, you know, finding him as a good option in left field. Um, he's not the defensive star that Kepler is, but offensively, um, he definitely would be a little bit better. And I think um, that is something the Yankees would definitely be considering, especially with the lefty bat. But as always, my friends, make sure to like and subscribe as always. And we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees episode. Mm -hmm.